morning. But we do have a word that we want to share with you. Again, I know, as I often say, some of you that know me know that uh, sometimes time may get away from me. You know? It won't this morning. And I'll do like Pastor Steve so y'all be really comfortable. I'll even take off my watch. And I'll look at it, and I'll tell you what time it is. It's uh, a little past 20 minutes to 11. Amen. Now, what does that mean? Absolutely nothing. Other than it's 20 minutes to 11. Amen. Amen. I'm going to ask you to just for a moment, those of you that are not physically able to do so, I'm not obligating you to do that. But if you would just stand just for one more second, minute, let's just say minute. I have one passage of scripture. Well, maybe I'll read two passages of scripture. And it comes from Matthew 6, 33. And it reads, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I'm just going to let you think on that a minute. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Psalms 37, 4 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. If I was to choose a, a topic or a title for today's uh, message today, it would be vertical alignment. Vertical alignment. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Seek ye first. Let me stop there. It said, but, but, something was said prior to getting to that but. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then what? All, and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. I can remember early in my Christian walk hearing that those passages of Scripture read and preached on many occasions. And really, the heart of those Scriptures for me at that time were not the seek ye first and delight thyself, but what I got to really quick was all these things shall be added unto you. And he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Maybe, maybe you've made that mistake of really getting to the results without actually doing the things that needed to be done by you and I in order to get those results. Maybe that's where you're at this morning. Maybe you've quoted that scripture to others and maybe you even directed it to the Lord about reminding them of his word about seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. But there came a time in my life where it seemed like that some of the things that I desired from the Lord weren't happening the way I thought they should happen. When I read Psalms 37, 4, and it said, Delight thyself also in the Lord, he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. There were times when I felt like that wasn't being seen and evident and manifested in my life, and I would question God, and the enemy would cause me to wonder whether that was, there was an exception to that. Maybe because of, maybe, maybe because of, my family or maybe because of, you know, uh, uh, my ethnicity or maybe because of uh, what side of the tracks I grew up on. Maybe it didn't apply to me the same way it may have applied to other people. But I always heard that God's word is true and he's faithful over his word to perform it. He watches over his word to perform it. So I knew that there was some type of disconnect and God is not a man that he should lie. God is faithful. Let every man be a liar. Let God forever be true. So 
There is a scripture in the Bible, and you've heard me refer to it before, and, and usually you hear it around communion time about let a man examine himself. So there came a point in my life and continues to be a, uh, opportunities in my life where I have to take a moment when things aren't going the way I think they should, that I have to take a moment to examine myself. And oftentimes, I've found that the reason things aren't happening the way I would desire that them happen is not because it's not the will of God. And you know, the other thing is, is that there have been times where in my, in examining myself, and maybe there have been times where I felt that maybe God, you've missed out on some things I've been doing. Sometimes I have to tell my wife that. Don't do no good, but I try to tell her anyway. But there are times, and I don't know whether you've done it or not, but you, you seem like, you know, I got to remind God about what I've been doing, you know? And we think, you know, we start, we start checking off that list that we make that we feel like makes God happy. I went to church. Oh, I went to Wednesday night prayer. Ain't very many of them there on Wednesday, past, uh, God, but I'm there. I'm part of uh, the praise and worship team. I uh, help with this. We start just giving a list of things that we do that we feel like God ought to give us a little merit badge and special attention for. I wish Keith was here. So we try to find reasons other than maybe something may be wrong with us that may result in us not seeing the full manifestation of what we believe God, not only what we desire for our lives, and it, can't, it ain't all about a house and a car and food on the table. There's other things that we may desire from the Lord, but we may see that those things are not being manifested in a way and in a manner uh, and to a level that we would like to see it manifested. So when I, when I, when I've, Gone back to these particular set of scriptures, and I've and I've and I've meditated on those scriptures, and I've examined those scriptures. I've examined that I've read them and I've confessed them, but I haven't walked them out. <laughs> Stay with me. I haven't, I haven't actually, I've I've I've, I've uh, parroted the words. But when it comes to how my, have my footsteps and my actions been ordered by those words, I've found times where there, ha there haven't been. Where there haven't been. And that seeking God first and his righteousness while coming to church and being active in the church and all that is important and part of it. But that in itself is not you personally seeking God. And let me tell you something this morning. Do you realize there's a lot of churches that are overflowing this morning with people who are on their way to hell? And I'm not pronouncing judgment on them, but they're going to church. But when it comes to church, God's not in church. He's not a part of their experience. They're religious. They're doing all the things that superficially look like they're in the kingdom, just like the Sadducees and Pharisees. Jesus told them, he said, outside you look like white at sepulchers. But he said, on the inside, you're full of dead men's bones. You're a graveyard. There's no life in you. Hallelujah. But seek ye first the kingdom of God talking about getting in alignment and not just any type of alignment. You know how it's amazing how the, the world and how the devil and his crew, they, they, they get together. If they've got a cause, they know how to get together. And they know how to use the weapons of their warfare to rally and to get their cause in front of everybody and to demonstrate or whatever they want to do, there's a way the world can rally and, and do things uh, and get in alignment with one another. Even those that may have some opposing views, but when it comes to uh, the world coming together, they come together. How much more should we as the church, the body of Christ, be able to come together and get in alignment with God? So again, I was referring to myself about coming in alignment with God. So I found that 
while there were activities that I would be doing or, and was doing and should be doing, when it came really to my personal time with God and my focus, much of my focus was on the activities rather than the person that was supposed to be in control of me doing those activities. So I had to do a reassessment of what I was doing and reevaluate my motives and my objectives. And I've shared this before, and again, we're talking about being in alignment, vertical alignment with God. When I first came to Valley Harvest, I, I, it was an exciting time in my, in my life. It was, a, it was a scary time. It was a turbulent time in my life. I knew I'd heard from God. I knew I'd heard from God. And some of you have heard this story, but I'm gonna, it's worth repeating. It was a time that in my marriage, it was one of the most troubling times and critical times in my marriage, uh, Teresa and I. It was a time where, you know, I was seeking God because there were things that were going on and happening where I was hearing, I was, fortunately, I was hearing the word of God. I was under the word a lot. I was hearing the word, and I was hearing things that I wasn't, like I said, seeing being evident in my life. Yet I knew it was the word of God, but yet my circumstances didn't manifest the things that I he was hearing being preached and said. So it caused me to examine in my life relative to the word of God, and I found weighed in the balance and came up wanting and needing. The whole point was during that time of seeking God, God spoke to me one Sunday morning and told me in a, that a church that I grew up in all my life and thought I would never leave, that my assignment was over there and that I was getting ready to move to another place. He didn't tell me where I was going, but he just told me, it's going, you're going to move. And I, I communicated that to my wife. And at that time, I knew she wouldn't understand and she didn't understand. As a matter of fact, she was surprised that I would even say that because she thought I would never leave. And matter of fact, she felt a little guilty because it was a place where she wasn't exactly happy at being. And she thought that my decision was primarily due to her. And quite honestly, I told her, had it been just because of you, I'd have left a long time ago. But God hadn't released me. But I was trying to get in alignment with God. But I heard God speak to me one Sunday morning. Woo! And he gave, me an, he gave me an assignment. He gave me a directive. And it wasn't, it wasn't where I was going or what I was going to do. He just said, you're released. And in my spirit, I understood what that meant, that I was released from the assignment that I felt I had at the church I was growing up in and had a, a leading role in. Actually, actually, to this day, there are people that would tell me, you should be the pastor of that church. But that wasn't what God told me. And that wasn't God, what God called me to do. So we went out pursuing God, looking for what God was wanting us to do. So we actually took action to what God had said. And to make a long story short, God brought us to Valley Harvest. Did we know we were going to land at Valley Harvest? No. But on the first Sunday that we came here, Pastor Steve brought a word. And Pastor Steve knew me, but he didn't know all about my circumstances and situation. He didn't know the testimony that I had that God had spoken to me. But I came on that Sunday morning and there was a word that God gave Pastor Steve that was directly to Teresa and I. Ooh. Have any of you gotten a word from the Lord? And I knew right then I got excited. And I said, you know what, Teresa? God knows where we're at. And that word encouraged me. But at that time, that word was an encourager, encouragement to me, but I still didn't know where I was going to land, still seeking God. Again, to make a long story short, I saw over a period of time in attending here, visiting here, and actually visiting other churches, but we came to a point after about nine months that we decided that, hey, the Lord has placed us here at Valley Harvest. He placed us here at Valley Harvest. And looking back on that decision, I'm so glad that I got in alignment with God and heard his voice because subsequently, during the season after that were some turbulent times for us. Even though it was some exciting times, there were some turbulent times, and God had us in a place and under a covering 
that covered us and blessed us and raised us up. And I shudder to think, what would have happened had I missed God? It's not that God couldn't have made things, still worked it out, but I'm just so glad that I heard God and got in alignment with what he said. And as a result of that, I've seen the results of hearing, obeying, and then getting in alignment with God's uh, purpose and will for my life because I've seen as a result all these things shall be added unto you. I've seen that the aftermath of being in alignment with God resulted in some blessings that I would have forfeited had I not listened to God. Most everybody in here has a car. And probably at one time or another, taking their car to the shop and the mechanic tell you that you need a wheel alignment because your tires are wearing unevenly. If you are fortunate and find it early, you can save the expense of having to replace your tires. There may have been some symptoms that you either ignored or didn't notice that would have indicated there was a problem with your alignment. Bad alignment can cause your steering to pull in one direction or another. You may even notice that your steering wheel shakes or vibrates, making your driving uncomfortable. Now, I use that example because we're talking about getting, when we start talking about vertical alignment, do you understand what I'm talking about, a vertical alignment? It's talking about getting in alignment with God, with his will, with his purpose. It's taking the time to really evaluate where you are in your relationship with God and whether or not you're in alignment. And like a car that gets out of alignment, when we get out of alignment, things can begin to wear on us. Life starts happening. Things start to wear. And if we don't get it, if we don't recognize the symptoms, we'll start seeing some tread coming off. And we'll start, and what happens is a lot of times we see symptoms, but we ignore them. You know, when you're out of alignment, when you're driving and your car is out of alignment, sometimes you feel like, you know, you got your wheel, you got your steering wheel straight, but you feel yourself going to the left or the right. You know what I'm talking about? If you do, act like you know what I'm talking about. You know, husbands, sometimes, you know, you get in your car, your wife's car, and you say, Lord, did you see that light on? Don't you, need to, don't you know to put some gas in this thing? And she'll say, yes, but I know I can go so many miles. How many times does that happen in our lives spiritually that the light comes on? And we ignore that light and say, well, I can go just a little bit further. Huh? Huh? How many times that we, the Holy Spirit prompts us and gives us that check that we're getting out of alignment? How many times, you know, sometimes we think things catch us unawares and God's been talking to us all along. And we, he's letting us know we're getting out of alignment. Our prayer life isn't what it used to be. Our worship isn't what it used to be. Our love isn't what it used to be. Our intensity about serving God is not what it used to be. And then we find gradually when we get out of alignment, things begin to erode in our spiritual life. And yes, we can still come to church. <laughs> we can still sing on praise and worship. We can still participate in some of the activities and the ministries of the church, but we are dry and like an empty wagon. Matter of fact, our love walk isn't what it used to be or should be. We're mad. We stay upset all the time. <laughs> Bad disposition, 
sending everybody to hell? Talking about one another in the church? Could be a great help to the pastor if he would just listen to me. Out of alignment. When we get out of alignment, if we don't catch it in time, a lot of damage can be done. And like I said, when your car and your wheel gets out of alignment, sometimes it requires a brand new tire. If you catch it early enough, matter of fact, if you check it out before you get, if you take time to look at your car before you get in it, many times you don't have to go to the mechanic to find out that the tires are wearing. Some of us are wise enough to look and say, you know, that ain't, that don't look right. Are you driving the car and you feel it pulling? I need to get that checked out. You just don't keep on driving. But that's what we do spiritually. We get out of alignment, and we don't deal with it. The Holy Spirit speaks to us, and I'm talking about the people of God. I'm not talking about somebody outside the camp. I'm talking about those of us that are in the camp. Those of us that said we're blood washed. Those of us that says I'm the king's kid. We find that we get out of alignment And God said, if you would just seek me first in the kingdom of God and my righteousness, then all these other things that you need and desire, matter of fact, it will be added unto you. It's really really surprising to me, and I find myself with this also, the same place all the time. I've seen people in church who have been in bad situations financially, and they needed a job. They needed a job, and we prayed for them. I'm not just talking about here. I'm talking about in the outside of this church, people that I've known that I've prayed for, others have prayed for, and God bless them with a job. But then the blessing becomes a curse because they get out of alignment, and they allow that job to become God. And that, God, that job becomes more important than their role and in, in, in place with God. Matter of fact, that job becomes a higher priority in their lives. The, they forgot who gave them the job. <laughs> Maybe they get promoted. And all of a sudden, they get out of alignment because their focus gets off of God. And our focus gets on the job and not who gave him the job. Not knowing or not thinking that the one who gave me the job is the one that can help me keep the job. So what happens? They give themselves, as pastor would say, they excuse themselves. And again, when I say that, there are times that our jobs dictate that we do things that would cause us to be absent for church. Maybe our roles and job. I'm not telling somebody to quit their job. I'm just talking about having the priority straight and our alignment straight. And that if we see things getting out of kelter that would result in us missing God, God, you're going to have to give me another job because this ain't working. But we don't think that way. We don't think that way. But if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then we keep him, the job, our families, all in the right perspective. Early in my ministry, I had it all messed up. You know, it's God, family, and church. God, family, and church. Say that with me. God, family, and church. I had church and God on the same level. Very zealous. Always gone. Always gone. Excited. Very very involved in ministry and church, but it was at the expense of my family. I was out of alignment. I knew I was out of alignment because things weren't going right at home, and I couldn't figure it out because I said, God, I'm doing all this stuff, running all over the place, singing. I was, I mean, I was happy doing it, and I said, you need to work on Teresa, God, because apparently you ain't told her what I'm supposed to be doing. Because she don't seem to appreciate it. 
What's up with that? She's not spiritual enough to understand, God. There's a call on my life. I'm going to be gone, but I ain't at the club. I used to be at the club. I ain't the club no more. I could be going around here chasing other women. They chasing me, but I ain't chasing them. I just said that because some of y'all are getting sleepy. But God, I just don't understand why she's so upset. And it wasn't that God wasn't moving. And then the other thing was, I would get affirmed in what God was telling me to do. I'd get affirmation. Somebody come along and tell me how they'd be blessed by something I did or some part I took in church. But yet, with all that going on, hell was breaking out at home. You know what I'm saying? If mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. So I continued, even though I saw that the tires were wearing, I just kept praying, God, you just need to fix her. Because I thought the problem, I had already diagnosed the problem. It wasn't me. It was her. But God, who is rich in mercy and grace, if he treated me like a son, sometimes God's got to, you know, chastise us. He's got to give us a little spanking, you know? And then I was in a service one time, and it was, it was a leadership meeting, and a pastor, a minister was teaching on the role of a man in his home. And out of that teaching, I realized, boy, I was out of alignment. First of all, it wasn't that the things that I were doing were wrong. It was in the order in which I was doing them and the priority that I was putting them in. And I understood that I had put the church and Teresa in a very unfair situation. In that, she didn't have to worry about another woman because she was in competition with the church. The church was the other woman. Y'all have heard me say this before. And she said, I can't compete with her. I can't compete with her. She's got all your attention, all your time, all your interest. And all you got left for me is what little time you got left. And most of the time, you're worn out. By the time you work and go to church and run all over the place, you're worn out. So it took me a while to really realize that and get in alignment. And the only way I could get in alignment was, first of all, I had to fall on my knees crying to God, saying, God, I'm trying to do everything I know to serve you. And it seems like my, my life is not reflecting what the word says it should reflect. you got to help me. And then I had to humble myself and acknowledge I had missed God. Woo! I had to have enough confidence in God and enough humility in myself to acknowledge to God, I've missed you. And you got to help me fix this thing because sooner or later this tire is going to have to be replaced because it's going to be restored, destroyed. So God began to move. And he didn't begin to move in Teresa. You know who he began to move in? Me. Now, I'm not here to tell you I've arrived yet, but I have come to the understanding that when I get out of alignment with God, when this relationship with God, this vertical relationship with God, is not where it needs to be, when, when my desire, when I have other things in my life that take a higher priority than God, then things get out of alignment. Not, it doesn't mean I'm going to die and go to hell, but it means I'm not going to live an effective life as a Christian. It means that I'm not going to have a fruitful life as a Christian. It means I'm going to be, I'll be forfeiting some things as a Christian that God would desire for me to have, I would, like to, I would like for us all here today, because I know some of you are sitting here because you think you got those masks on, that God don't see you. You think if, if you look at me hard enough, that God won't expose you. 
But it ain't about me exposing you. It's about him exposing you, and it's for your good. And what God is trying to do, we want to see God move. We all wait. We're coming here on Wednesday. Pastor's talking about revival. Sheila's talking about revival. There ain't going to be no revival unless we get in alignment. The left wheel can't go one way and the right wheel go the one way and the back wheel go one way. We got to come in alignment. And we can't come in alignment together as a corporate body until we individually get in alignment. And some of us in here are on dangerous grounds because the enemy is bringing things into your life and circumstances and issues and challenges, and they ain't all bad. Some of the things come across as being good. Some of those things come across as being the blessings of God, and it very well could be. But if those things take your priority and your alignment off of God and get your focus off of God, then you need to do a check. And you need to get in alignment. And I'm here to tell you, if we really want to see God move, we personally, individually, you and I, are going to have to take time to examine ourselves and see whether we have got God in the center of our focus. I'm going to say it again. We're going to have to take time, get still long enough, and really take time you know what, here, I, I know it's a challenge because it's, it's a challenge for me, but have you, are you, have you, have you went to pray? I mean, pray? Really, you want to pray? And when you come to yourself, your mind is on something else? I mean, the last thing you remember saying was, Father God. And the next thing you know, you're thinking about work. Some problem, some issue. What's on the what's what you gonna eat next week? That's warfare. And until we can get in a place where you and I can press into God, I'm gonna ask a question that's gonna bring, I hate to bring it up because I know I ain't doing it. <laughs> Confession is good for the soul. The church I came up in and grew up in, those old saints, I'm old now. Well, I ain't as old as some of y'all think I am. But some of those older saints, they knew when, when they needed something. Now, they, you know, we got a lot of educated people in this church. At least you got a high school education. Most of you got at least a two-year degree. And, and many of you got a four-year degree. So we got a pretty educated group of people here. But the church I came up in, a lot of people couldn't even afford, they weren't afforded the opportunity to even go to school. They didn't know what it was to, to finish high school. It's not that they didn't want to. It's just that they were living during a season where it wasn't afforded them the opportunity to do so. But you know one thing I learned from them old saints? They knew how to get in contact with God. And when they prayed, it wasn't no eloquent prayer. It was a personal, intimate prayer. They talked to God just like they're talking to you and I. They referenced him, but there was something different about the way they prayed than what I hear now. There was something more intimate and personal about when they prayed than what I hear now. There was something I felt. There was not coming in. Prayer time was not a quiet time. The quietest time you want to have here at Valley Harvest is a prayer time. But when we prayed, when they prayed, there was some noise going on. It wasn't none of this pray silently. Everybody was praying. And they would lift up their voices like a crescendo. And they would cry out to God. Woo! And you know what would happen? God would show up in the house. He would show up in the house. And when they didn't see God move like they knew he wanted to move, and when they didn't see God manifest the way he should manifest or the way he said he would manifest, they'd be talking about turning them plates over. Y'all don't understand that. Many of y'all don't understand what I'm talking about when I say turning plates over. Y'all can look at me and see 
ain't much turning plates over at my house. I say that jokingly, but there's a lot, a lot there's some conviction about that. But when they really wanted to, to seek God, not that they were going to try to make God do something, but they were trying to position themselves so they could hear God. Whew. And I remember one mother in our church, her name was Sister Webb, and she would come to me and she'd say, son, if you want to see God move, you just turn that plate over. I ain't telling you something I heard about. I'm telling you something that I know. She said, you turn that plate over and you seek God and you watch him move. Whoo. Ah. But we're in the microwave age. We ain't got time to wait. We too busy. I got to eat my meals. My blood sugar drop. I can't work all day. Now these folks, some of these folks had, you're talking about manual labor. I ain't talking about sitting at a desk looking at a computer. I'm talking about manual labor. And they would fast two, three days. Ever how the Lord would lead them to fast. But what I saw was they got results. And not that they just got results for the sake of getting what they wanted. They got the results that God wanted. I saw when they prayed and fasted and got in alignment with God, we saw greater manifestations of healing. We saw greater manifestations of salvation, people being saved. We saw doors being opened that were closed. We saw people who were bound by demonic spirits being set free. Hallelujah. Talking about being in alignment. If you attended here at any, any significant amount of time, you and I both have had the opportunity to hear Pastor Steve speak about the importance of us as a church having a godly vision. Ever since I've been here, he's been a pastor who's talked about vision. Pastor understands if we're going to be able to be effective as a ministry, that we're going to have to have a directive that comes straight from the throne room of God. It's not that he is not smart enough to come up with some good program. He could come up with some programs and some activities that all of you would find value in and would actually have a positive effect in the community. And we'd all feel really good about ourselves. Look what we're doing. And that's the problem. We'd be looking around saying, look what we're doing. And God wouldn't be in the center of it. But God understands, that, pastor understands that God doesn't want him just to come up with a good program that looks good. Or come up with something that appears to be something that he's ordained or directed us to do. He understands as a leader that he has to seek God for vision and direction. To the extent over the years, pastor has purposed that he can't always do that staying in his familiar surroundings, that sometimes, like Jesus, he's got to steal away and take some time to get away from the daily activities and spend some time with God and seek God for direction. And he understands that he doesn't want anything else to distract him. He don't want Sheila distracting him. He don't want you and I distracting him. Matter of fact, when he takes these retreats, he says, guys, y'all just please try to leave me alone. If anything comes up, Pastor Perry, Pastor Derek, Pastor Elaine, y'all deal with it. Because he said, I'm taking some time because I need to hear from God. Matter of fact, you know that he puts a priority before getting here up on the pulpit on Sunday mornings. And he does his thing on Thursdays where he steals away. And he spends time with God because when he gets up here to preach, which we all should do, is that when we bring the word of God, we better make sure that we've heard from God before we deliver it as the word of God. Are you with me? Let me help some of you. It's 20 after 11. So I've been up here, woo, an hour. So, but you've heard Pastor Steve talk about the importance of us having a godly 
a vision. He understands it's more than just having a lot of good programs and projects to work on. Like I said, while these activities can be good and noble, it's imperative that we understand whom we, who we are serving and that we are not our own and that we have a God-given vision to fulfill that has a mission and an objective. I know that we all appreciate, appreciate the priority that he spends spending time with God before he stands before this congregation and brings the word on Sunday morning. Now, if it's important to him as a pastor, how important it is for us as believers and a part of this body that we put as much priority on our relationship with God as he would as a pastor? What good does it do for him to get in line with God and we're out of alignment? You know what happens when a leader is in alignment with God and the people aren't? They go around the mountain 40 years. 40 years. The promise is just over the way. But they spend 40 years grumbling, complaining, whining, unbelief, doubting. 40 years. When they could have gone over into the promised land and then had their matter of fact, those that came out of Egypt and saw God move miraculously and powerfully Majority of them, other than Joshua and Caleb, didn't enter into the promised land. They died in the wilderness. Why? Because they did not get in alignment with God. It wasn't enough that Moses heard from God. It was important that he heard from God, but it was also important that the people heard from God and got in alignment with God so they could get in alignment with what God had called them to do. So what God is calling you and I this morning to do is to get in alignment. I said, what God is calling you and I to do today is to get in alignment. I said, what God is calling you and I to do today is to get in alignment. I'm going to say it one more time. What God is calling you and I to do today is to get in alignment. One of the things we got to overcome is a religious spirit. We got to break that. We got to kill that spirit, a religious spirit. It it looks like it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, but it ain't a duck. Having a religious spirit, you look like you got the goods, but you don't. There's no power. There's no joy. There's no peace. There's no love. And God is not in the center of anything that you're doing. And again, I believe the reason the Lord has given me this directive to give to you today and to me is that we're asking God to move. And God wants to move. And he desires to move. But the only way that he can move is that we get in alignment. It's up to you. It's up to me what we do with this word today. It's up to you, and it's up to me how we respond to this word today. It's up to you, and it's up to me whether we'll take the time to even see whether or not we are in alignment. It's up to you, and it's up to me to be concerned enough, even if you think you are, that God, I just want to make sure because I do want to see you move. Not only in my life, but above me, I want to see your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If anybody can experience God, let them be able to experience God through my life. If anybody wants to, if you, if anybody can experience God, let them be able to come to Valley Harvest and experience God. If anybody ever wants to experience uh, what it is to be around God, let them be able to see God in me. I asked you the question that the Holy Spirit asked me one time. When you look in the mirror, who do you see? Who do you see? And I'm not talking naturally. I'm talking about spiritually. When you look in the mirror, who do you see? Do you reflect God? That's what I was challenged with one day. I looked in the mirror and God said, who do you see? And I looked at myself and I said, stupid, who do you think I see? And I wasn't calling God stupid. I was calling myself stupid. 
stupid who you think you see, you see yourself. And immediately the Holy Spirit, who I didn't know was speaking to me at the time, said, that's your problem. You see too much of you and not enough of me. If anybody says anything good about you, it's not because you're so good or that you're so holy. It's because you're allowing God's light to shine through you. Man came up to Jesus and called him good master. Jesus said, now, why would Jesus, Jesus was good. Why you call me good? There's none good but the Father. <laughs> if you see anything good about me, it's because I reflect the Father. How do you know when you and I aren't in alignment? It's when people see God in you and see God in me and see the power of God in me. When will we get in alignment? When we walk through the doors with our hands lifted up and with a praise on our lips. When do we know that we're in alignment with God? When we see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit operating in our church. When do we see the, the, that we're in alignment with God is when we go into our workplaces and the atmosphere changes on the lines that we work on and in the departments that we work in because we bring the presence of God into the environment and that changes things. Hallelujah. When do things, when do we get in alignment with God? When I got in alignment with God, things begin to change in my home. When I got in alignment with God, things begin to change on my job. When I get in alignment with God, things don't affect me the same way they did before. Doesn't mean I don't have problems. Doesn't mean that I don't have issues. But I look at them with a different perspective because I'm in alignment with God. Sing a song. Open the eyes of my heart, God. Open the eyes of my heart, God. I want to see you. When we get in alignment with God, we begin to see that those that are for us are greater than those that are against us. When we get in alignment with God, we'll look at the mountain and say, mountain, you got to move. Hallelujah. When we get in alignment with God, our speech changes. We don't talk like we're defeated. We don't talk like we're a victim, but we talk like we got some authority. When we get in alignment with God, the devil might try to disguise himself as an angel of light, but when he shows his head, I see you, devil. I see you, devil. When we see ourselves getting out of alignment, we start moving toward God. God, whatever it takes, I got to have you. Whatever it takes, whatever I got to get, we're not desperate enough for him. I'm going to close. Another lesson God had to teach me when I came here when I was trying to get lined up. God, he, 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 he uncovered a spirit of pride in me that I didn't want to acknowledge, nor did I think I had. I didn't think I was a prideful person. But I noticed that after I was here for a while, I wasn't doing some of the things that I was accustomed to doing in the church that I was in. And I found myself being critical, judgmental. I'm talking about while I was here. Joined the church. But because I wasn't doing, I got frustrated. Because I felt like, God, there's a call in my life and I'm not doing some of the things you called me to do. I'm just sitting here. But God had to teach me something. So, like I said, I made a complaint to God just to find myself. I said, God, I, I just don't understand. You got me here, but I'm not doing anything. And I went to enumerate those things where I felt that God had spoken to me and spoken over my life and had people speak over my life. And I would call myself reminding God of what he had told me. And you know what he responded with? That's all true. It's all true. But right now, all the things that you're talking about have nothing to do with me. It's all about you. I said, God, no, it's not. It's not about me. It's about, it's about you. 
And then I was a little bit insulted that he would say that I was a prideful person. So I had the audacity to say, if you want to see a prideful person, I'll show you one. And I had this one individual in my mind that who, who I went to church with, who was a very good worker in the church, but very, a very prideful person that undermined the gifting that God had in him. And I, that person came to mind. And when I saw myself do that, I realized I was guilty of being a pride, pride, having a prideful heart. And you've heard this before, but I'm saying it again. I cried like a baby because I was embarrassed, I was ashamed that I had to acknowledge it. But I had to repent of it and acknowledge it to God. And you know what God told me to do? That's all well and good. Now you need to confess it to somebody. I said, confess it to somebody. I'm still worried about me. Brother Tim, what's Tim going to think if I acknowledge that I'm a prideful person? Or I have been guilty of being a prideful person. Tim's not going to think the same way about me anymore. He's going to, every time he sees me, he's going to think about that prideful Perry. See, I was worried about more about what God was wanting to do in me and through me than I was, I was worried about what Tim was thinking than what God thought. So God said, you need to confess it. So I played it safe, told my wife. And she kind of said, I'm glad you figured it out. It was safe. But then I had, then I had an occasion to just say it, probably in this kind of setting, to a congregation of people. But what I thought I would feel as far as condemnation, what I felt was a release. I felt a release. I felt that that spirit that had a hold of me could no longer have a hold on me and that I had been liberated by obeying God. I don't know what your situation is. I don't know what your circumstance is. But I know that God is calling you and I to get in alignment. What are you going to do? Is this going to be another Sunday where you can leave here and say, you know, Pastor Perry did okay. Maybe you'll say, he didn't do okay. <laughs> be glad when Pastor Steve comes back. He don't take as long to preach as Pastor Perry does. But today, you've got a decision to make. Whether you do anything or not, you've made a decision. My challenge to you is make the right decision. What, what progress or what this church does in the weeks and the months ahead, in the new year coming in, is going to be determined by what you and I do relative to getting in alignment with God. And if we don't see God move like he wants to move, we can't blame God. The only person that we can look at is ourselves. And what God is saying, I want to move. I want to move not in this church alone. I want to move through this church. I just don't want you to come in here and have a great service. I want you to be able to go out in the hedges and highways and compel dying men and women to come to Jesus. And I want you to have some power and authority that when you go into the hedges and highways, that you can do like I told the disciples. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. You don't do that always in church. You do it out there. But the only way that you can do that is get in alignment with God. Would you stand to your feet? If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, Lord, and my feet. Touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Father, we come before you today. And we acknowledge, Lord, that we need you. We acknowledge, Lord, that we need to come in alignment with you in our personal relationship with you. 
And God, we know that being out of alignment results in wear and tear. It results in us being pulled in directions that we shouldn't be going in. When we should be going straight, we're going to the left or we're going to the right, Lord. We know, God, when we're out of alignment, Lord, it causes us, Lord, to miss out on the blessings that you have for us because we're not seeking you first in your righteousness. Even the things that we would desire for you to do through us as a church, Lord, will only come, Lord, as a result of us coming in alignment with your will and purpose for our lives individually, which will bring us together corporately in alignment with you. So today, God, I just pray that through this message today, that someone today, God, will hear your voice and you speaking to them, and that God, not only they, but I also, will pursue you in a way, God, that will cause us, Lord, to line up with your will and purpose for our lives individually as well as collectively. And that, God, the purpose and the vision and the direction that you have for us as a church and a ministry, Lord, that we can do it, Lord, to your glory and to your honor and to your praise. And that, God, we will recognize, Lord, that we are part of your kingdom and that we are a part of the Father's business. Help us, Lord, to be totally committed to you. You said if any man would follow you, he will have to deny himself, take up his cross to follow you. You also said that we have to die. We have to die daily. So some of us, Lord, we need to die out to a lot of things that are not of you. And I pray, God, that you would give us the courage and the will, first of all, to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal those areas in our lives, Lord, that pull us out of alignment. And that, God, we would die out to our flesh and allow the Spirit of God to make us alive and sensitive to those things that are relative to you. Before we seek your hands, God, we seek your face. And we pray, God, that as we seek your face and that as you reveal yourself to us, Lord, that as you eliminate our minds, our understanding, and that as you anoint us, Lord, with the power of your Holy Spirit, that, God, all the other things that would be relative to our lives and our desires, they will be added unto us because we've put you first. So God, I pray in the name of Jesus that as we get in alignment, that we would see a greater manifestation, Lord, of healing in our midst. I pray, God, that as we get ourselves in alignment with you, that God, we'll see men and women not only coming into church to be saved, but that God, we will have witnesses that will go out of this church and lead men and women to God, that we will have the courage to go to our families, our co-workers, our friends, even the stranger that you would lead us to, Lord, and we would share them, share with them the testimony of Jesus Christ and what he's done in our lives. He would do the same for them in the name of Jesus. I just pray, God, that as we allow you to have preeminence in our lives, Lord, that, God, we were to see the blessings and the favor of God overflow over us as a body of believers. And not just for us to be a ble- to be blessed, but, God, that you could make us a conduit of blessing. And that, God, you would empower us, Lord, through being blessed, to be a blessing to others, not only to their spiritual needs, but also to their temporal needs. So, God, I just pray that you would just move in this place Move in each heart. Move in each family. Take us to a new place, a higher place in you. And God, if there are things that we need to do to bring ourselves in alignment, certain disciplines that we need to put in place, you know, God, that we fall many times victims to the fleshly desires. But we pray, God, that you would help us, Lord, to kill the flesh, to die out to our flesh and be yielded to the Spirit of God. Let that begin with me first, Lord, in the name of Jesus. So God, I pray again that you would touch, that you would keep us by your Spirit and help us, Lord, to be in alignment with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.